Hello and welcome back to the run-up. We are discussing the court order on INET to allow use of temporary voter cards in March 18 election. The court made the order following a suit that was brought before it by two aggrieved registered voters, Kofu Orla, Ulushegun, and Wilson Orwell, who lamented that despite their efforts and repeated visits to INEC office, they were unable to obtain their permanent voters' cards, that's the PVCs, before the February 6th deadline. Well, joining us to discuss this is Barrister Imana Umaren, a legal practitioner. Hello, Barrister Umaren. Hello, we also have Barrister Johnson Ago with us. It's my pleasure. Not forgetting my virtual co host, Adebayo Olooke. Gentlemen, you're welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you for having us and uh, good morning. All right, Barrister Moran, what political or what constitutional quagmire has this new order thrown up? Well, uh, it's not a constitutional quagmire, really. It is a fact that, uh, unfortunately, what the court did not hear from INEC uh, before uh, coming up with this judgment. My own take, uh, which I have argued strenuously and which some of the courts have upheld, is this. They, we have a presidential system of government. There's the executive branch, the powers of the executive branch. And our presidential system of government, we got it from America. We, why don't we look at what, how it is done in America? There are powers that are exclusively that of the executive. INEC had a reason for, uh, for issuing uh, uh, temporary voter's card and permanent voter's card. INEC said, along with the election, that it was cleaning up it because some people had did double registration. Some people did had faulty registration. After, after that, um, look at the um, the the, the, the uh, look at the list of those who, who registered. Some registrations were cancelled because the people did double registration. So when you have this, and now the court has on its own um, decided uh, to 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 allow persons who don't they have the uh, the, the uh, 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 temporary uh, voters card who have who did not show whether they were that they had double registration or not the court has now said you go ahead and, and vote that is usurping the powers of the executive unfortunately that's in my mind that's usurping the powers because the executive has taken its action and you have not used it and the process by which uh, uh, they came is not a, a, a process that is calling the powers of the executive to uh, challenge the powers of the executive that the process of doing that is a process of judicial review where the courts will, will have to determine if the actions taken by the executive were done in accordance with the law. Now, I let get, clearly, I'm sure that they are going to, uh, that's why they may they want to appeal, because they may want to say, we have not, our position was not taken into consideration. Yeah, but the court did say that there was no, con uh, uh, um, um, that the Constitution, that's the 1999 Constitution and the Electoral Act uh, 2022 laid emphasis only, well, did not specifically lay emphasis that it's only the uh, PVC that should be used. It just laid emphasis on voter cards. That's the voters' cards. But emphasis was not laid specifically on the PVC. You want to answer that before I go to Johnson? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. Um, oh. No. Barista Moore, did you get my question? Yes, I did. Yeah, because the court yeah. did reveal yesterday that 
neither the 1999 constitution nor the electoral act 2022 laid emphasis that only the pvc could be used that it only stated voters cards yes we agree however you see the the, the process of arriving at something at a, at, at, the, at the point when you are given powers to do things the process of arriving at that point must be taken into consideration. Okay? The, I said here, I know before they got to the point of giving you permanent voter's card, had to review if you were previously registered somewhere else, which, causes, which, is, a, which is an issue of government registration, if your age is not up to 18, you get, mm -hmm. or if that is on his, on his list is a person who has been who is dead. So these are issues that INEC took into consideration before arriving at um, at, um, uh, at, at the decision. At okay, I'm going to go to Johnson Argo right now. However, uh, Johnson, hello, Johnson, can you hear me? I, I can hear you clearly. All right. Please, can you uh, come in here? The court did say that these people, that is um, the two gentlemen, Kofowala Olushego and Wilson Allwell, were duly registered. And so it gave this judgment that they should be allowed to vote using their temporary voter cards. However, the suit was not, um, did not allow for other Nigerians who um, have their temporary voter cards but could not get their permanent voter cards to go ahead and register because according to the court the suit was not in a representative capacity okay so having heard what barrister umar and just answered gave right now please answer this and also respond to the point he has raised i think i'll start by um responding slightly to what he has said mm -hmm. i do not accept that um, persons whose names are on the register as of today are not eligible to vote because INEC has said that it has cleaned up the voter register. He says, INEC has said that all those who have done double registrations, it has removed their second registration. Therefore, there is a presumption that any person whose name is on the register now is eligible to vote. The question of permanent uh, issuance of permanent voters' car is a question of logistics. So it shouldn't be the fault of those who have fulfilled all the conditions for um, voting and INEC failing to print and issue to them, even if it is at their homes, a permanent voter's car. It shouldn't be their fault. They shouldn't be deprived of the opportunity to exercise their civic duties. That's how I see it. Now, as for the court restricting the application of this judgment, it is quite commonsensical, if not just the law. The reality is that the person who approached the court is the person who has received reliefs. If the suit had been in representative capacity or a class action, it would have applied to everyone. However, that is not the end of it. What is the law is the law. So if the law applies to Johnson, since we are all equal to the before the law, it should apply to Morin. We are Morin has the same circumstances as Johnson. I think it's quite clear. So it will be up to INEC to apply the law equally. If the court has now said that what it held is the position of the law, INEC should apply it equally to everybody. It shouldn't wait for a deluge of litigation before it complies with the law. In fact, nobody actually needs a court order to comply with the law. That's the way I say Right now by Barrister Justice Uhwebu, a human rights lawyer. Hello, Barrister Uhwebu. Barrister Uhwebu, can you hear me? Okay, it does appear that uh, we're having a bit of communication problems with him. Okay, let me go back to Barista Omoring. Barista Omoring. Yeah. All right. Well, you've listened to Johnson. I did. And he's saying that it should apply to all. Yes, you see, but I, what I do not know, and which I think my learned friend also may not know, is the, the, 
was the voters list exhibited in their origi uh, originating process. You get? Was it? If you, your name is on the voters list, in the permanent voters list, mm. then you should vote. But the issue is, do they have the permanent? You see, they, they, we are. There's a bit of confusion that's been created here. If the list of permanent voters, the list of permanent voters was not before the court, how did the court arrive at the point that their that their names were on the permanent voters list? That's one. You see, the court should not. The names of the two gentlemen judgments that, that are court. difficult of interpretation, that have more than one interpretation. It has a rule of, of, of interpretation of, of, of statute. The order that we make this, the, 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 the law that they are interpreting look um, uh, um, foolish or vague. Barrister so, Morin. My, yes, please. Barrister Morin, the ruling specifically made it clear that because these two gentlemen were duly registered and their data captured in INEX database. And so they were duly registered and because they couldn't get their voter cards, a permanent voter card was the only reason why they couldn't vote. So not allowing them to vote, according to the judge, will be disenfranchising them. And, uh, you know, and they were the only two that made this application. And that's the only reason why it's limited to them. But they were no, duly it, uh, registered. Yes, but you see, when a judgment is passed, even though the, there were two, and they were asking, the, 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 the INEC immediately will have to obey the, the orders of the court. Because that's, that's the constitutional provision. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody who has benefit of that order will approach INEC. Definitely. And if INEC, then you have, you have a problem. Because, and then that may be an issue that may cause the elections to be set aside because if you if you have breached somebody's fundamental rights anything you do in breach of that fundamental right is null and void so now that but INEC has expressed intention to appeal this case what implications will that have on the next coming election well i i would you see i agree with uh, my letter from mr johnson hmm. that INEC put up a lot of things here however the law, the way it operates, will not create a, a confusion. You get? Mm -hmm. Now, INEC should have, once they, you, are, you are registered, either they, by way of email, you get? Yeah. They will send you a card or your, um, um, your, 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 your VIN number, voter identification number, with, with which you can go back to know that, oh, this is where I'm supposed to vote. And then since you have a bimodal um, uh, system of accreditation, when you get there, if you put your uh, uh, thumbprint and you are not the person, you are rejected. Mm -hmm. Yet, if you, if you, if you, if, or if you not, your thumbprint does not work, your face, your, your face will identify you. So these are the problems INEC, you see, when INEC was going on, on with this, a couple of us asked, to, spoke out that INEC should review its uh, modus operandi because at the end of the day, if you disenfranchise somebody wrongfully, you have that person an opportunity of determining who rules him. And like uh, Chief Abela said, you cannot shave a man said in his absence. So it's important that going forward, we should bring people who understand what democracy is about to head these institutions. Let us stop this thing of picking people because they do know them or something. Let's look look for people who are who have shown competence in other areas or who are, who understand what their duties are. We put, put a lot of round pegs in square holes in this country because of man no man, because somebody's from my area, because of uh, 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 balancing and all those. We need to start getting the right people to do the job. All right, all right, okay, okay. In view of what you're saying, Johnson, you could also come in here. Last year, 
Barista uh, Zakome uh, SAN went to court over a similar case. And um, that case was presided over by um, Justice Inyang Eko, who actually declined in that case to issue a mandatory order to compel INEC one to extend the CVR exercise till you know 90 days before the elections. And it also refused to order INEC to allow citizens with temporary voter cards to vote. However, that is changed now with this new judgment at the Federal High Court given by Justice Obiora Eguatu. It is a, see, it is a judiciary that's causing this confusion at this point, isn't it? I'm sorry, you see, these are some of the issues that we need to thrash out in, 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 in law amongst us, between the bench and the bar. Now, the, the judgment of my Lord, Justice Seguatu, did not, even though it's their concurrent course, did not take into consideration the decision of Iyayeko J, where he, he declined. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Declined, even though the judgment is not binding on him, he should have um, taking, my Lord should have taken time to review that judgment and give reason why he is departing from that uh, judgment that is of um, uh, um, similar uh, <coughs> similar status. You get? Mm -hmm. Because so the judgment of my Lord Ego is not binding, but was first in time. So my Lord uh, Justice uh, Eguatu should have given reason why he is departing from the position of his learned brother. Okay, Johnson, please come in here. I am not able to um, condemn the most recent judgment because, first, it is not binding on the 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 first earlier judgment is not strictly binding on the later judge. It is persuasive. Second, I do not know if that judgment was cited to him. I haven't read the text of this judgment, so I am actually unable. To, I mean, the text of the two judgments, so I am quite unable to. Um, comment extensively on both of them. But common sense says to me that only a judgment cited to a judge will persuade that judge, especially if um, um, that is it's a, it's a judgment of first instance. When I mean first instance, I mean judgment made by the first court. The, the Federal High Court is one court, whether it is located in Abuja or in Lagos, is a court of the same level. So judgment made by a judge in Abuja is the same category as judgment made by a judge in Lagos in the Federal High Court. Now, um, when I say persuasive, I mean that the judge in Lagos should be guided, if he chooses, by the judgment made by the judge in Abuja, where, they are, uh, where the same issues are the same. I mean, when the issues, facts, or circumstances are the same, but in the case we have at hand, as far as it's available in the public domain, the judge analyzed properly what the issues are, what the rights involved are. So I am unable to fault it. If anything, the judgment uh, refusing Ozekume, as assuming the report given to us here is correct. Very correct. Yeah, if it is correct. The, that judgment would be the erroneous one in that it did not take into consideration some of what this particular judge has taken into consideration. And judges are entitled to depart from the decisions previously made. Yeah, well, that case involving Chief Ozekome actually took place on Friday, 25th November 2022. But let me take you back to a question which I asked earlier, which is now that INEC has expressed interest to appeal this case, what happens or how should other Nigerians who find themselves in this situation, duly registered, but couldn't get their permanent voter cards because like uh, these two gentlemen had gone to INEC offices repeatedly to get their PVCs but couldn't get it. Or as the case uh, was with some people that I interviewed some time ago, they went to some of these INEC offices and they were told their systems were not working. Go and come back. They went, came back, systems were not working. So these 
Nigerians who were duly registered, were disenfranchised, should they jump on this ruling? And this appeal, I mean, this appeal that INEC has indicated interest to make, how long do you think it would take for all of that to be cleared out before this coming election on the 18th? The fact that INEC wants to make an appeal does not prevent them from complying with the order. The first duty is for them to comply with the order, unless the court grants a stay of execution of the order that has been made. I am not aware that INEC has applied for a stay of execution or that any court has granted a stay of execution of the order. So in the circumstances, my first opinion is that the people who fall into the same category with those plaintiffs are entitled to show up on the, at the polling unit and present their means of identification for INEC to confirm that their names are on the voters' register being used for the election of the uh, of 18th March. If their names are there and they are uh, um, very uh, verified to be the people in the, uh, bearing those names, they should be allowed to cast their votes. All right. And, and in, according to the terms of this judgment, and my view is that INEC, like I said, INEC is entitled to appeal. But until it has appealed and that judgment is set aside, it is bound by the decision of the court that gave the directive. Or if the court, if another court has given an order staying the execution of the judgment, uh, it will also take the um, privilege of that and refuse to comply. But currently, we are not aware of any state orders at the moment. Well, thank you, uh, Barista Johnson Ago and Barista Omaring. We'll take a short break. We're still uh, on the run up. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the run up on Plus TV Africa. Before we went on that break, we were discussing uh, the Federal High Court order that told INEC to allow two Nigerians to vote with their temporary voter cards. Now I need to invite Adebayo Loweke to ask the next question. Hello, Adebayo. Hello, Maureen. Um, as always, very exciting times. And this judgment only totally has served to make the whole electoral process uh, much more interesting. Uh, I would like either of our two guests to respond to these thoughts that I have. Um, we normally have a, a time frame for all electoral disputes to be resolved uh, and that this must be done before the swearing in of elected officials on the 29th of May. How come we do not have such uh, provision to say that any dispute arising you know, or resulting from the election, see that as we have now registration of voters, ought also to be resolved before voting actually begins? Because I think, and you, you are lawyers, you can you know, tell, say, say what exactly is, what the situation is exactly. But I think that these two Nigerians may institute proceedings against INEC for denying them the opportunity to vote in the presidential elections, for instance. Or maybe that's not possible. Well, it would be good to get your perspective. Should there be a time frame to resolve all issues, even from the standpoint of uh, voters, before elections begin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, um, I think what your your question is uh, for the growth of our democracy. Um, yes, but you see, the law did not make that provision. The Electoral Act did not make such a provision for that. And you see, let us be very honest. Unfortunately, our laws in Nigeria, especially the election laws in Nigeria, are uh, really made for the benefit of those the players, not for the benefit okay. of them. most of the laws, the electoral acts that we have passed. It most times is to protect members of the national assembly, mm -hmm. and sometimes they, they go. That's all, because you see, and you know, there is a, a big problem here. Most litigations, most appeals, are not being heard. Because of the the, the the number of election, pre election matters that are flooding the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal. Okay. You, I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit off uh, your question. How do you want a country where 
business transactions cannot be decided in 25 years. Mm. Come and invest in that economy. We oh, have disputes, but within 25 years, the Supreme Court has not decided on them. But electoral issues are determined within 90 days or 120 days. Mm. So that is a major problem. The, 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 the people in power have cornered everything in this country. Yeah. So let's get to what you said, sir. Yeah. It, for judicial activism, yes, it, these people can definitely, but you see, another thing is this. Why did they wait till after the presidential election? They said it is the principle of law that equity is the vigilant, not the indolent. Mm -hmm. Did they file this suit before the presidential election? You get so these are the issues that may come up if they if, when they, when they it's, it's, it will be good for our judicial uh, our judicial um, uh, 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 growth. Get so yeah. these things that we have been talking about the 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 system is skewed against the people. A lot of laws that are made in this have been by this for, by this recent by the uh, from 1999 to date, especially the laws are made for the benefit of the of the politicians. Hmm. So we 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 have we, this is what we are stuck with. This, the first time, imagine the, the debates as to qualification to to, uh, to vote during the primaries. When the National okay. Assembly did, they had knocked themselves off. Yeah. The delegation, remember? Yeah. Yes. These people do not have the, 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 the time, the competence to look at laws that are beneficial to Nigerians. All the, this, most of the people that have been elected now, the next thing they'll go and look for is, is, is how much are they going to be paid, how are they going to increase their entitlement and all those. Outside here, it is those who have done well in business or in their professions that seek these offices. Not people who are still hungry. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Okay, Johnson Algo, do you want to add to what uh, Barista Marin has said in response to Adebayo's questions? Actually, the, uh, first, I will accept that it seems the, the electoral laws were politician centric. The people who made it weren't exactly thinking of obtaining the legitimate consent of the government. We were most probably uh, considering elections as a mere formality. And so that I accept. But I think it is up to us and other members of the society to make these politicians to become accountable to us by testing some of the rules that they themselves have made in the courts. And it is up to the uh, uh, the court, the judiciary, to balance the interest of the politicians and the electorates by the way they interpret the laws that have been made. That is why I so much cherish the interpretation that has been given by this latest uh, federal high court decision allowing two persons to vote with their temporary voters cards. I must accept that the judge didn't go outside the test of the law, so far as I, uh, I, can, I see the, to the extent I have read. It is the same law that he has interpreted in the correct way. So it is up to us to continue to test this out. And if this same gentleman hasn't gone to the court to ask the court whether INEC is entitled to exclude them from participating in this electoral process, this judgment wouldn't have come up. And as to the question of um, whether there should be timeline, well, it may be desirable to have timelines. But my thinking is that the timelines should be towards enhancing participation in the electoral process and not description of participation. Because my conception is that democracy is a people-oriented government. Mm -hmm. it's the more people are able to show their consent, 
be better. In other words, there should be evidence that the majority of the people within a particular locality has indeed given their consent to be governed by the set of politicians that are angling for power. This um, consent is only a, 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 um, a given or expressed by the electoral process, by the number of people that actually turned out to vote, out of the total eligible to vote, and out of the total population. If I must use the presidential elections for illustration, we understand that the total of it, it's 8 million, 20, 20 something thousand voted for our president elect. And that's about 3.4% of the total population of Nigeria of about, um, about um, 250 million people. How is that an expression of consent by the majority of Nigerians? And if you look at it properly, that 8 point something million people that voted for our president is just 36.4% of the total people that voted on that day. So which shows that about 66 point something percent of Nigerian electorates rejected our president-elect. So we should be making rules and interpreting the rules that we have made in such a way as to accommodate more voters rather than restriction or restricting voters. At the end of the day, if in fact a, a, a government will benefit more from legitimacy and support if more people actually vote in an election and it emerges victorious after a lot of or all the possible people who could vote has have, have voted. I don't know if I've made myself clearer, but I think that in summary, it is easier and better to obtain legitimacy and support if all the people who have, could have voted have voted. I'll be um, the margin of victory might be different or difficult to actually um, determine. Probably you might go into the run and all of those things, but it is not democracy if just a few people are, by technical rules, allowed to select government for a population. All right. Well, thank you so much for all of these analysis on this. And of course, one of the things that uh, have been thrown up from all of these somersaults is the fact that voter apathy may be on the increase as we work towards the next elections on the 18th.